show you how to make a vector drawing portrait of Rodney Dangerfield in Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. Um, you can sort of use this technique in Photoshop and other uh, types of graphic tools, but I really I wanted to demonstrate how to draw with uh, the Bezier curves, the, the pen tool in uh, Adobe Illustrator. So if you can find the pen tool in your other applications, you can uh, use this technique as well. But I like the pen tool. I teach um, my design students to use the pen tool just because it offers a lot of control. It's something that um, professionals know how to, to use. You're certainly allowed to, to do freehand. There's a, a, a lot of benefits to doing it freehand, but uh, the pen tool gives you precise control. And, it, and so uh, we, we select the, the pen tool by, here it is. Uh, you, the shortcut is just P on the keyboard, or you can click the pen tool up here. And uh, so when I draw a, a portrait in Illustrator, I like to zoom in uh, to do fine detail, but, um, and I use a lot of layers. So here I brought in a picture of Rodney, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and lock the layer that Rodney is in. That way, so that'll be our, our reference, and I'll create a new layer. And this will just be a, a drawing layer. I'll give it a name drawing one, real creative. But um, I don't know why, but I usually like to start with the, the shape of the head first, even though it gets in the way right away. If you, uh, because it, it should be in the background, but I'll just kind of show you how this works. Oh, another tool I use a lot in this process is the eyedropper tool. The shortcut for that is I. So let's let's start with that I, and then um, you use that to do a sample. You it samples a pixel under the eyedropper tool and sets that to the the color that you're going to use. So I'm just going to pick a something kind of in the the middle, something that can represent his skin. So there we go. It's it's. That's that's what I happened to grab, and so that's what I'm going to draw with. And now I'll switch back to the pen tool, and let's just get to drawing here. So uh, the idea with this is you draw the shapes that you see, um, and you uh, I like to keep these fairly simple, and so it becomes stylized. It becomes cartoonish. You can spend a lot of time and make it very realistic, um, but I want to just do this quickly to show you that the power of using shapes, communicating with shapes. If you can see shapes, you can draw a portrait. All right, so I'm gonna draw the main background shape of his head, so I, I'm gonna, and since that's in a shadow there, I'm not gonna draw it. I'm just gonna try to find the edge of the colors. And uh, let's just go to work here and see what happens. So um, the way this works, it draws a straight line from point to point. If I just click and then make a, another point it makes a straight line and it fills in a color there like that as well um, and I don't necessarily like to draw with with that going on while I'm drawing but let, I'll let you see why here and so I'm gonna control Z to undo that point I don't want that last point um, but so so when you click and you pull it then you create a curve that goes back towards the curve the point where you came from and also allows you to cr create another curve going forward. So um, those little handles that just, uh, the farther you drag them out, the, the farther your, your uh, curve's gonna go. So, and you, you can just get practice. See, if I go too far, then it's gonna go and fight with that other handle, see? It makes it go down like that. Um, but here, I'm just trying to, I'm roughing in the shape of his head here and I'll just draw that edge like so and if you want perfectly par uh, perpendicular or horizontal lines hold the shift key down and it see and it constrains it 45 degrees 0 degrees 90 degrees like so so I'm gonna go up here like about here and see the problem already that's starting to happen is that I can't really see anything that's going on in the background. So, and, and once I get over here, even I've, I've covered up uh, an area that I want to see. So, 
I'm going to end, uh, I hit the escape key to, to end my drawing there for a second, and then I'm going to just swap that back. So I've made my sample, it's still the same color, but I just made it into the line. And that's the, that using that arrow key uh, allows you to flip it uh, from fill to outline and back. So I'll just pick up where I left off, go click, and, and now I can uh, draw that way again. So. So now I'm just kind of drawing the basic shape of his his head there. I, I probably should have followed the hand, but that's all right. I can go in and add more there. All right. So now I have a shape there, and uh, uh, that's my background. So let me go back to layers here. I'll rename that to just background, face background something like that and then now that it's drawn it's there and I can I can turn it on and off see I can just have it get clear out of my way there but it's there if, and turn it on if I I want it to and, and then I just like to use a fair number of layers uh, while I'm doing this so I just go in here and now I'm going to just start drawing in the details so what would you like to draw well uh, if you really follow Betty Edwards' suggestions uh, in drawing on the right side of the brain, when you're drawing, you don't want to draw eyes. You don't want to draw noses or lips. You want to draw shapes that you see. So I'm really, I'm, that's another reason that I like to zoom in a little bit, and or a lot even. And then now I can just focus more on the shapes than uh, the features. So I'm just, I'm looking now for shapes let's see there's a nice shape right in here let's draw it so um, I'm gonna go get my eyedropper out again and take a sample and get that color and go back to the pen tool I'm using the shortcuts I and P to switch back and forth and I understand that it's not a solid color it varies but uh, for this style of drawing I'm just gonna do my best to find a shape that is roughly the same color. Oh, let's uh, let's make that back into a line, or I'm going to run into trouble. Okay, there we go. Now continue on. It looks like that shape kind of ends there. And like I said, this this does not need to be perfect to still be pretty cool. So, and I got to make a decision here. It looks like. I don't know, there's kind of, am I drawing what I'm seeing or am I drawing what I think I see here? I don't know, this all kind of looks like it's about the same color, so I'm just going to wing it here. Well, I think that stuff I included there is a little bit darker. have to make it I'll have to figure out here what I want to do yeah I think I'll back up a little bit just go with now see that's the trouble with digital you can undo and <laughs> think too hard about it where if you're painting you just paint and you go with it and if it's messed up then you just fix it so let's try to keep that attitude in mind. So I'm going to call this a shape here. And just where it changes color pretty dramatically, you want to follow that. So I'm going to call that roughly the same color. I know there's there's differences there, but that's a shape there. I can turn that on and off then. Uh, but see, and where I got confused, there was this highlight in here too so I'll just come in and draw some of this shape as well we'll see what happens looks like it gets a little bit darker down in that part so I think that color is not too bad add that way and when I'm drawing these smaller shapes I, I like to turn them on to, to see what I'm working with there Okay, 
the nice thing about working digitally is I can um, change their layer and order. So here's a, a darker shape in here. I can actually, I can draw, um, and instead of fighting it, I can just, I know that I want this whole thing to fit behind this other shape. So I'm going to go in like so. And let me get my sample change the color a little bit. All right. And then let's put that. Mm, even in the layers itself, you can rearrange these. Did you know that? So I, I got that path there. I can put it behind those other shapes that I drew there. Now if I flip it back, see how it's, it's behind those others. So that's kind of desirable there. All right, let's keep working here. Um, it's already starting to work. There's a shape. Like I said, I don't want to get too detailed. That's got black that it's getting the color of right at the moment, but I want it to be more of this dark red. I like this eyedropper sample it there we go pen back to some more with the pen tool so here's another definite shape in there notice I'm not drawing lines I'm drawing I'm just drawing shapes and I want to get a switch switch back the lines so I can see what I'm doing, but I'm actually going to use the edge of the other shape we created to put this one in here. So it kind of goes up something like that. And then I drop her that and let's do that. Okay. But I also noticed there's even more of a highlight in here. So, and it's kind of, hard to know for sure how that shape's going to go, but it actually doesn't matter too much as long as I, I put it in there. All right. And this, this one is an, on top of the other. So where is it? It should, yeah, it shows me this one. I just need to put it down a level there. See, it's sitting behind there. That's how I want it. All right, I think things are working here. I'm just going to keep drawing. I see. A little bit of a darker. Oh. Undo is a good one to know. That's Control or Command Z. Let's kind of come back here like so, and then set the color. I think I got too much of a, a difference there, so I might want to draw more like so. Oop. Come on. I'm fighting it a little bit here. There. that eyedropper it got the dark color okay I think that's the color I want there that's good now see I'm drawing <laughs> backwards I'm drawing the stuff behind and then I'm drawing on top of it I guess that's the way you draw in the non-digital space but, so now but I'm actually I'm drawing this shape to be behind these others again. So I guess I do work a little backwards on this, but since it's digital, it doesn't matter. That's more of that pinkish color in here. And again, it just depends on how much detail you want it to be. I'll just bring that clear down so it's behind everything else. Okay, and uh, 
might even zoom in a little bit more here to get this odd shape. So uh, let's see what I want to do. Looks like this shape kind of goes this way. It's Illustrator by default, it's snapping these lines to other existing lines. Sometimes I like that, sometimes I don't. And you can adjust that in the preferences if you want it to, to snap or not. Yeah, I'm running into trouble because I can't see what I'm doing. That's so. Just switch back to the line mode for a second. And yeah, it looks like that's all pretty much one color there. And I'll sample that sclera of the eyeball. Again, I, I shouldn't name it like that. I should just call it that shape. But all right, um, if I want, I can I can switch to an ellipse. Uh, and this shape here is pretty close to a perfect ellipse, and then I should be able to stretch it a little bit to get it to look like what I'm seeing in the in the picture there. Boy. You know, I think I think I'll make that really dark. And then let's get in I'm gonna zoom in even more. And let's because I want a little bit of detail. But yeah let's since it's the same color, let's just go ahead and do that one too. I'm going to hold the shift key to make it perfectly round. I'm not sure if that's right or not, but that's what I'm going to do. And then this highlight here, I'll do the same thing, except that's more of a elliptical, isn't it? All right, and eyedropper that. And I think this one's okay to work the way it is. Just gonna put that that way. Flip that around. See, there's just there's kind of a square shape there almost. We're so zoomed in so far, it's the pixels are. So maybe the thing to do is just draw what I see here. So I see some brown. I'm gonna just kind of of what I see. There's another little highlight there, isn't there? I'll go around it. Like so. And then put that back down behind this stuff so I can see what's going on again. Back to the pen tool. See, there's it's kind of a star shape in here. I don't know if you notice that, but Just the the color of the man's eye is just crazy, like so. Uh, I'm going for the. Uh, kind of the blue green color. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> eh, I can't see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of trying to follow as best I can the, the light color in there. Huh? That might work. Bring it down. That might work. Okay. And then I think. I'm just going to make a command decision here. It's going to go. Oh, yeah. This half over here is really dark. Oop. Hang on there. So I'll go back like that. And I can adjust these handles. I use this select tool, the, the white selection tool. And I can modify that shape. All right. I think I want to set its color to something like that. 
and then bring it down behind everything else like that. I don't know if it's right or not. It's just what I'm going to draw tonight. So let's start over here. I'm going to get the other half of this eye. Oh, it's it's got that weird handle on it. That it's all right. We can fix that. Let's just go down like this and come over back like this and we'll adjust everything else. Okay. So I should be able to actually add another point with one of these tools. What happened to that? I'm forgetting where the add a point tool is. I'll have to read up on that. It used to be under the pen tool, I thought. Maybe I'm forgetting something. Anyway, I'm just trying to get this to sit in the background. That guy's going to go just behind everything, practically. Well, it's pretty much the same shade as this, and I don't want that, so... Let me, yeah, let's get more like that. There we go. Now we're, now it's starting to look right. Okay, let's zoom back out and we can inspect our work a little bit. Okay, I see a shape here, which I've drawn here, and but it, that's just a little bit different color there, isn't it? So, let's just... It's not going to be perfect, but it's it'll be cool. Okay, come down here like so. Let's eyedropper that color. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's put that down behind everything also. And then let's put that one back to its original color. Whoa! You need to be way, way back in the bottom of the stack there. Okay, and then if we zoom out, I hold the Alt Option key to get back. Okay, let's inspect our work. I'll turn the photo off, and there's what we have so far. Hey, far back, that that's looking pretty good, wouldn't you say? Anyway, that's the process. You just keep following. You find the shapes. And so I'm going to go real quick here and rough it in. Uh, so you can be as detailed or as uh, simple as you want to be. But so for me, let's just, I see like there's some highlights in here. And we're just going to leave them like that. And I'll put a little highlight in here that's kind of this shape. Where else do we have highlights? There's one kind of here. It doesn't even matter if it matches exactly. It's just going to communicate the idea. Uh, there's a little bit more like in here. Okay. That's cool. Uh, what are some other shapes? We've got, there's a shape up here. Here's a shape. Oh, I forgot to do my color on that last one. If I get in too big of a hurry, I'm going to kind of forget what I'm doing. So let's get the, there's the basic color going in that one. And then back to the pen tool. There's a shape, basic shape right here. doubt that that's 
it's more darker. There you go, because it's more in the shadow. All right, what color do we need here? Sample it from there. That's probably good, just like that. And Here's an important shape. Just kind of like right in there. We'll go with that color. Let's see. I don't think if we don't get these shapes here. We're not going to have Rodney Dangerfield, so it's just kind of these dark circles under his eyes. Like I said, it's kind of hard to draw if you can't see, so you might want to flip that around and check out what you're doing. I can grab it by the handles. You can actually grab the line and adjust it. There's quite a bit you can do here. And if you don't like how that, if you want it to curve, that's where you get this anchor point tool. Or make it into a an angle like that. That, that tool allows you to adjust how those points work. Yeah, okay. And I'll just do a few more and then yeah, I think you'll have the basic idea on the technique here. So there's a shape here. The more you can identify the individual shapes based on the, the colors that you see, the more realistic it's going to be. So here I've got darker in here than in, the, in here, and then I've got some highlights in here. So uh, if I just go and sample that color there, it's going to be really, really flat. But if I add a couple more shapes in there, something like like that and sample that nope that didn't get the color I want I want a lighter there okay and back to the pen and there's something like right in here a little highlight Sample that a little bit darker. Yeah, I don't think I, I think that I want that to be a highlight. So let me try for that little lighter piece there. There we go. All right. Even that, if I turn this back to full, that gives it some depth. It's, yeah, it's cartoony. Yeah, it's still flat, but it, it's looking better. All right. So with that on there and then uh, we had that other face back let's turn that back on look at look at what we're seeing already it's starting to look like Rodney so uh, that's the challenge try to draw uh, using vectors or shapes only you can do this in Photoshop as well you can draw shapes in Photoshop uh, but I think a vector drawing tool is easier if you if you know how to work with it so so if I turn that off, you can see I'm, I'm starting to get a, a shape going here. So that's what it's about. That's uh, drawing portraits in Illustrator using a photographic reference.